Welcome to the first of several videos on vector cross products. The goals of this video are to determine the cross product of two vectors in R3, verify the cross product of two vectors is orthogonal to the given vectors, and then also determine the angle between two vectors. To determine the cross product of two vectors, we can evaluate a three by three determinant where the first row would be the i, j, k vectors. The second row would consist of the components of vector u, and the third row would be equal to the components of vector v. And there are several ways to evaluate a three by three determinant, but we'll use the cofactor expansion method, meaning we'll first eliminate row one and column one. The remaining elements here will form the two by two determinant that we see here, then we'll multiply that by vector i, and then we'll subtract the determinant formed by eliminating row one and column two. Eliminate row one and column two. Notice we'll have u1, u3, v1, v3, which we see here. We'll multiply that by the j vector, and then we'll add the value of the determinant formed by eliminating row one and column three. So we see here, u1, u2, v1, v2, and then multiplying that by vector k. Now what's special about the cross product of two vectors is the result is another vector that is orthogonal or perpendicular to both vector u and vector v. Let's take a look at this. Here's an illustration where we have the cross product of the red and blue vector. And what I want you to notice is that the black vector or the cross product is perpendicular to the red vector as we see here, as well as being perpendicular to the blue vector as we see here. So the black vector is the cross product of u and v. Now you might be wondering why is it that the cross product or the black vector points in this direction rather than the opposite direction? And that's an important thing to consider. And before we take a look at this in more detail, I want you to be careful not to confuse the cross product of two vectors with the dot product of two vectors. Remember the dot product results in a scalar or numerical value However, when we cross two vectors, we get another vector that is perpendicular to both. Okay, so let's talk about how we determine what direction the cross product vector will go. This is called the right hand rule. What we're gonna do is take our right hand and point our fingers in the direction of vector u so that when we close our hand or bend our fingers, they bend toward vector v. So for example, in this diagram here, if we point our fingers in the direction of the u vector with our thumb pointing up, if we bend our fingers, they will bend toward vector v. Our thumb points up, so the orthogonal vector will also point up. So the order in which we cross these two vectors is important. We point our fingers first in the direction of u so that they fold or bend toward v. If we switch the orientation of the two vectors, if we want our fingers to close toward vector v, we'd have to have our hand almost upside down so that our thumb points down so that if we bend our fingers, they would bend toward vector v. Thumb would point down, therefore the orthogonal vector would point down. So this is the right hand rule. And this is how we determine what direction the orthogonal vector will go. Let's take a look at an example now. We want to determine a vector that is orthogonal to both u and v. So we'll have to find the cross product. So we'll have u cross with v is going to be equal to a three by three determinant where the first row consists of the i, j, and k vectors. The second row consists of the components of vector u. So we have three, one, negative five, third row consists of the components of vector v. Now we'll go ahead and evaluate this. The first two by two determinant will consist of the elements remaining after eliminating row one and column one. So we'll have one, negative five, negative two, negative three. We're gonna multiply this by the i vector and then we're going to subtract the two by two determinant formed by eliminating row one and column two. 
So we'll have three, negative five, four, negative three, times vector j, plus, now we're going to eliminate row one and column three, so we'll have three, one, four, negative two, times vector k. Let's go ahead and evaluate this. We're going to have negative three minus positive ten, that's going to be negative thirteen times vector i, minus, here we'll have negative nine minus negative twenty, which will become negative nine plus twenty, it'll be positive eleven, but we do have this minus sign here, so I'll have minus eleven j, plus, here we'll have negative six minus four, that's negative ten times k, so instead of writing plus negative ten, I'll go ahead and just write minus ten k. So this vector should be orthogonal to both vector u and vector v. Let's go and take a look at the graph of this. Now it's a little hard to interpret this because we're looking at a three-dimensional graph on a two-dimensional surface, but you can see that this blue vector here, the cross of u and v, is perpendicular to both the red and brown vectors as we see here. Now that we have found u cross of v, let's verify that this vector is orthogonal to both u and v. Remember the way we can verify this is if we dot u and the cross product and v and the cross product, if that dot product is equal to zero, those vectors are perpendicular. So we have to calculate two dot products. First we have to dot u with our cross product to make sure this is equal to zero. Then we have to dot v with the cross product. So let's go ahead and verify this. Here we'd have three times negative thirteen, that's negative thirty-nine, plus one times negative eleven, that's negative eleven, plus negative five times negative ten, that's fifty. Well this is negative fifty plus fifty, so that does equal zero. So these two vectors are perpendicular. Let's go ahead and check to make sure the cross product is perpendicular with vector v. Here we'd have four times negative thirteen, that's negative fifty-two, plus negative two times negative eleven, that's twenty-two, plus negative three times negative ten is thirty, and again this is equal to zero, so we have verified that the cross product is orthogonal to both u and v. And before we move on, let's go ahead and talk about some additional properties of cross products. The magnitude of u cross with v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times sine theta, where sine theta is the angle between the two vectors. Number two, u cross with v equals zero if and only if the two vectors are scalar multiples of each other. And then lastly, the magnitude of the cross product equals the area of the parallelogram having u and v as adjacent sides. Now we'll talk more about these in future videos, but let's go ahead and take a look at one example of this first property. Going back to the same problem, we can use this property to determine the angle between our given vectors u and v. Let's go ahead and try to do that. If we solve this for sine theta, we'd have sine theta must equal the magnitude of u cross of v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Once we find this, we can determine the angle between the two vectors. Let's give it a try. So here's u cross of v. We need to find the magnitude of this. We have the square root of negative thirteen squared plus negative eleven squared plus negative ten squared. Our denominator is going to consist of two different square roots. First, the magnitude of u, the square root of three squared 
plus one squared plus negative five squared. Multiply this by the magnitude of V, so we'll have four squared plus negative two squared plus negative three squared. Now to save a little bit of time, I've already simplified this. This comes out to approximately 19.7484 divided by approximately 31.8591. Now using some trig, if sine theta is equal to this ratio, that means arc sine of this ratio would give us angle theta. So let's go ahead and get our calculators out and give that a try. Let's first put our calculator in degree mode. Notice I'm already in degree mode here. So now we're going to press second sine for arc sine or inverse sine. Then we'll just type in our ratio. So the angle between those two vectors is approximately 38.3 degrees. Okay, that's going to do it for this first video. Thank you for watching.